Most of us are pretty familiar with maple trees. We recognize their distinctive leaf shape, as you can see right here. And we've seen them in lots of different places on the Canadian flag. In fact, the school where I teach, Payson High School, for a while had a maple leaf as their mascot. It was later changed to a lion. Um, but what you may not know about maples is that it's actually pretty easy to distinguish different species of maple. There aren't too many, and there's a lot of really interesting differences between them. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to tell the difference between different species of maple. All maples are in the genus Acer, so let's go out and look at some and get started. standing next to is the most common type of maple. If you walk outside your house and find a maple tree, chances are it's probably this type. It's the Norway maple and it is actually considered an invasive species in some states. It's not native to the United States. It's native to Central Europe um, and Western Asia and it can sometimes inhibit native plants. Norway maple leaves are very broad leaves. They're gonna have five lobes and when I say lobe I just mean the sections of the leaf right here and each lobe is going to have several points on it, three to five points per lobe. The easiest way to tell if something is a Norway maple or not is to pull a leaf off of the tree just like I did here and then if milky white sap comes out of the leaf stalk then you know it's a Norway maple. Super easy way to tell. The fruits of the maple tree are these winged kind of pod things. They're called samaras and different species of maples have samaras that have different angles. So on the Norway maple, you can see the two sides of the samara are almost horizontal from each other. It's a very wide angle between them. This is a sycamore maple or Acer pseudoplatinus. The leaves of the sycamore maple might look quite a bit like the leaves of the Norway maple at first, but there are some important differences. Okay, I have a sycamore maple leaf on the left here and a Norway maple leaf on the right. First of all, the sycamore leaf won't have that milky sap um, that comes out of the end of the stem if you pull it off the tree. Um, so that's one easy way to tell. You'll notice also that the sycamore maple has more veins, kind of more distinctive veins. Um, it also has teeth around the edges of the lobes rather than these sharp points that the Norway maple has. The undersides of the leaves are different too. The sycamore maple has that kind of silvery underside like the silver maple. The Norway maple doesn't have that as much. The red maple is more common in the central and eastern parts of the United States than it is here in Utah, but as you can see, you can still find it here. The Samaras in red maples have a much narrower angle, maybe 50 to 60 degrees. Red maple leaves are a lot different than Norway or Japanese maple leaves. They often only have three lobes, and they're just not as broad as Norway maple leaves. This is a silver maple, also known as Acer saccharinum. The silver maple leaf is a pretty delicate looking leaf. It's got five lobes with really deep notches between each of the lobes. The underside of the silver maple is this kind of silvery color, hence the name silver maple. This is a Japanese maple. It's a very beautiful, delicate tree. You can see the canopy of leaves for, forms kind of an umbrella shape. Um, these trees are delicate, so they don't do very well with a lot of sun or a lot of cold wind. So that's why they are usually planted close to a building, usually on the north side of that building to avoid too much sun and too much cold wind. Japanese maple leaves are really easy to identify because they often have more than five lobes. For example, this leaf in front here has seven lobes 
and then they will have very very deep indentations between their lobes which gives them a very delicate look. Sugar maples like this one behind me are commonly used to make maple syrup. Unfortunately, sugar maples don't generally do super well in Utah. These sugar maple leaves have five lobes and you can see they have three really sharp points off of the top three lobes. This is the big tooth maple, or Acer grandidentatum, if I said that right. It is native to Utah, so you can find it in the canyon or anywhere where there are a lot of native plants around. It's really closely related to the sugar maple, and in fact the early settlers here in Utah used it to make syrup, and that's something we could do too. It does really well here in Utah. And in the fall, when the leaves in the canyons turn color, uh, this tree is responsible for the red color. So it's a beautiful tree, it's native to Utah, it gives us great maple syrup because of its high sugar content, so it's a good tree. The leaves of Acer grandidentatum, or the big tooth maple, um, have five lobes. They're actually a little bit fuzzy underneath, and you can see why it's called the big tooth maple. There's these kind of big teeth in the lobes. You can see it's kind of more of a shrub than other maple trees. It's got multiple trunks. This is the box elder maple, sometimes also known as the ash leaf maple. It's another maple that's native to Utah, and it's also kind of a shrub uh, it doesn't live very long. It's really fast growing. Unlike the other maples we've looked at, the box elder maple has a compound leaf, which basically just means that the leaf is composed of uh, several leaflets. On the box elder maple, it can be three or five or even seven sometimes. So that is a huge difference between it and other maples. Box elder maples are also the only maples that are dioecious, meaning there are separate male and female trees. On most other maples, the male and female flowers are on the same tree. So this particular specimen of box elder maple is a female tree, and I can tell that because it has these samaras, these fruits. The male trees don't have those. Uh, the box elder tree also attracts box elder bugs, especially the female trees, because the box elder bugs like to eat these fruits. So if people ever put these trees in their yard, sometimes they'll choose to put a male tree rather than a female tree to avoid an infestation of box elder bugs. I made this chart to summarize the differences between different maple species and I put one kind of distinguishing characteristic for each maple tree on it and a picture of each leaf so you can see them all laid out together and see how different they are. Um, so I'll put a link to this picture in the description in case you want to look at it again or print it out and use it. So that's all of the species of maple. Now what you need to do is go outside and find a maple tree and pull a leaf off and look inside and see if there's milky white sap. If there is, you know it's a Norway maple. If you're really into this, then you can try and find all the maples. You might have to look hard for a few of them, but they are around and you can find them all. It's like Pokemon. Catch them all, except with maples. Anyway, they're a great species, great trees. Thanks for watching.